So before we officially tap into our agenda, um, I would like to just do introductions. I know we were doing that for a, a while and we certainly usually do it in person, um, but there's there's definitely some new faces and just wanna make sure everyone is is aware. It's, it's important when you have stakeholders and public and elected officials on the phone to really know who your audience is. And um, so I'm just gonna, you know, round robin a little bit. I'll call you out and, and maybe just give a really quick update. Just, you know, who are you? What's your organization? And I guess just let us know how what things look like for you right now, um, you know, into the new year and, and how business is going. Quickly though. So we'll start with Deputy uh, Kathy Hayden. Here, Kathy Hayden. Deputy Mayor Kathy Hayden, City of Sumner. Things are looking good. Got some exciting things coming up. Awesome. Luke, Luke Corum. Hi, I'm Luke Corum with uh, Bill Corum's Pialp Nissan. Just recently now joined the board here at Pialp Sumner Chamber of Commerce. Uh, things are looking good. It's a good start to a, a year, uh, definitely compared to a year ago today. So mm -hmm. things are going up. Awesome. Good to hear. Dan McReynolds. Hi, I'm Dan McReynolds from Parametrics Engineering. I say we're doing fine. We're all working from home 100%, but business has been decent. Transit's in the ditch, uh, but WashDOT is spending quite a bit of money on fish passage and we're getting a, a nice share of that. So we're keeping the lights on, although we're not there to run the lights. <laughs> Great. Good morning, Greg. Nice to see you, a new member. Hi, I'm Greg Bird um, with Shiloh State and Top Down Brewing. Um, the winery business is going well, um, so thank you for that. And uh, uh, the brewery has been very difficult to open, um, and uh, I'll let Chad speak to that if he wants to. Thank you. Great, yeah, I, some of that cut out, but um, he has Shiloh Estate Cellars. For many of you who may not know it, he's one of the few uh, wineries that are growing grapes on the Northwest side successfully and right there in Sumner on the river, just a beautiful uh, property. So something fun to do outdoors that's safe and, and a little bit of normalcy there to go visit him. Um, Carmen, nice to see you, good morning. Good morning, uh, I'm Carmen Gores, commercial lender with Heritage Bank. Um, up to our eyeballs with PPP and the whatnot, along with regular, or I should say, but traditional banking needs and services. Our branches are open, our, lob our lobbies are closed, but our drive throughs are open. I also serve on the South Sound Chambers of Commerce, let's say, of coalition. So I always like to um, be, a, be a, attend to participate in this meeting as well. Awesome. Nice to see you. Councilman Whitting, good morning. Good morning. Ned Whitting, City Council, City of Puyallup. Uh, we're cooking along here, got our hands full with a number of projects. Uh, we're moving some commercial projects along uh, East Pioneer Crossing, and we're looking at annexing some property up uh, in the northwest corner on, off Freeman Road. Awesome. Representative Jacobson. Hi, Cindy Jacobson, Puyallup City Council with NAD and um, uh, State Representative. Yeah, what am I? <laughs> That's it. <laughs> Thanks. Great. Um, I'm ho I guess when we when we go come around to our representative, state representative updates, anything you may have. I my updates are about a week old, so if there's anything new, you can chime in on when we get there. I'll I'll call to you. Do you have time time constrict? Restrictions this morning? I can't talk. I think I have till like 845, 850. Okay, perfect. Um, good morning, Paul Green. <clears throat> Paul Green, Azure Green Consultants. Awesome. How are things in your world? Oh, we're struggling along, working from home and a little bit in the office. Okay, developments in Sumner coming along, okay? Uh, yeah, it's moving kind of slow, but it's it's coming. Okay. Thanks. Mayor Bill Pugh. Hey, good morning. Um, uh, we're so busy, the staff isn't even on this call. Um, 
Understandably. Ryan had some personal issues, so he couldn't be here, but no, um, just a lot going on. And um, just like everybody else, most of it's virtual, but the metrics say that we're doing more than we were the year before. So it's good. Good that we're all busy. Awesome. We'll hear from you a little later. Hi, good morning, Betty. Good morning, everyone. Um, Betty Capistani, uh, Director of Economic Development for Pierce County. And I always like listening to what your business pulse and needs are. Um, from our end, we're trying to figure out, uh, are there resources coming from the American Relief Package uh, to our community? And then if there are, what are the niches that need to be filled or the gaps? Because um, some of our businesses are doing extremely well and others are still really struggling. So what can we do um, if that does happen and come to fruition? Great, thank you, Sarah. Good morning, everyone. I'm Sarah Joy. I'm with Chicago Title, and the real estate industry is rocking crazy right now, and there is an inventory shortage. So, um, four hundred and five hundred thousand dollars over asking price is the new trend oh, 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 oh. in Kentucky, right? Yeah, hold your breath right there. So that's that's my news for the day. Okay, Councilman Morell, we'll hear from you a little bit more later, but welcome. Good morning. I like your background. Thank you, thank you. Yes, uh, Crystal Mountain, which has a 140% uh, above average snowpack right now and has the best skiing in the state of Washington. So uh, yes, I uh, am Dave Morrell, uh, Pierce County Council person for District 1. Fantastic, thank you. you bet. Yeah. Hi, Sean, how are you? Happy birthday, Sean. Well, thank you. Thank you so much. Sean Bunny, Creative Local Strategies, and we've managed to stay busy as much as I can keep up with all of the new ways of doing business and the technological challenges, but keep fighting it and hoping that someday we can go back to having real meetings. Great. Great. Thank you. Nice. Thanks for joining us. Jeff Wilson. Good morning, Jeff Wilson, Development Permitting Services Director for Puyallup. And as Councilmember Whitting already mentioned, we have a lot of big projects going on in the city right now. And uh, besides those, we're also working on some collaboration for um, with Mr. Green on some conservation future dollars to try and acquire some property that'll add to the inventory of the city. So other than that, keep them very busy and uh, a lot of projects moving forward. Awesome, we'll hear from you a little later. Good morning, Sean. Great to hear from you from the Port of Tacoma. Good morning, Sean Egan, Government Affairs Director for the Port of Tacoma. And actually one of the benefits of uh, all of our virtual work is I can actually get around to more meetings that are scattered throughout the county. So looking forward to getting plugged back in. And I, I mentioned earlier, I'm about one week uh, short on my uh, updates from the legislative session. So I would certainly turn to you to chime in on anything most recent um, when we get to that, if that's okay. <laughs> Not to put you Certainly. on. <laughs> Not a job. problem. <laughs> Good morning, Renee. Yes, Renee Reclaim, the Washington State Fair, uh, president of the chamber board this year. Excited to say we are getting ready to launch our spring fair, which is going to be a drive through step out model. Um, also an independent section um, with rides. All of it's going to be according to guidelines and crowd control and capacity. And so everything's timed entry. Everything's using all the proper things. And then just waiting our way through the next round of either PPP loan, employee retention credit, or the shuttered venue operator grant. So very, very lots of things going on at the fair. Great update. I know a lot of people have been asking about that. Good morning, Lana. Good morning, Lana Hoover. Um, you'd think we'd learn how to mute by now a year in, but that's okay. Uh, Lana Hoover, City of Sumner, Community Relations. Nice to see you all this morning. Likewise, Meredith, good morning. Good morning, Meredith Neal, City of Puyallup, Puyallup um, Economic Development. And, uh, you know, I'd echo what everybody else has said, both in Puyallup and Betty. At the county, you know, we're just super busy right now. Lots of new businesses starting up um, and trying to figure out how to chase those dollars right now, uh, make sure that we get more of it in our community. So watching what's happening at the federal level, at the state level, 
with the next round of the working Washington grants through commerce and then um, trying to see what the federal dollars are going to look like and hopefully guide some of those into our community so that we get a healthy share for our businesses. Guide away, thank you. Deanna. I'm still on mute. All right. <laughs> no, you're not. <laughs> Deanna is our business development director doing a fantastic job bringing on members nearly every day recently. So there is definitely something a brewing in Puyallup and Sumner. It is encouraging to see new members and new businesses opening, really is. So I spoke for you, Deanna. Chad, good morning. Good morning, this is uh, Chad with Top Down Brewing looking to open up in Sumner. Here very shortly, very excited for that. A few more hurdles to clear, uh, but we are very excited to get going and be part of the Sumner community. Fantastic. Well, we're excited to have you. Sheila. Good morning, Sheila Elwell, Director of Membership Engagement for the Talent Center Chamber of Commerce. Nice to be here. Hey, great to have you on board. Good morning, Brooke. Brooke Stegmeyer, are you able to unmute? At the moment, I will skip on, but uh, Hannah Nelson, I will uh, quickly introduce and let her say hi, but we're very excited. We've been down an operations admin Vic person um, for uh, since September when Lindsay left. We thought we would sort of uh, just all easily just take on all those additional tasks and I and my staff we tried but we, we were gonna call Hail Mary and say we can't do it and we are so lucky to have Hannah Nelson uh, on our staff. Hannah are you there? Yeah I am. Um, it's nice to meet everyone. Yeah I'm just gonna be the right now I think on paper I'm the assistant to the chamber CEO and then the operations, operations manager but I will be as a lot of people are saying, wearing a lot of different hats, so. Perfect. Um, Aaron, good morning. There it is, good morning, how's everyone? I'm uh, Aaron Homburg, council member, uh, Zagger's assistant, who I believe he's on the phone. It looks like that's his phone number, so he's here. Okay, perfect, thanks for mentioning that. Um, so yeah, we'll, we'll move. I see uh, Senator Gildon has joined us, great. Hi, good morning, everybody. Chris Gildon here, just uh, on my way down to Olympia, ready for another day of uh, voting on bills all day. So, <laughs> this will probably be the highlight of my day, so thank you. <laughs> well, thanks for multitasking. We'll hear from you in a little bit here. Uh, Mike Lehman, thanks for joining us. Well, Mike Lehman is our favorite Chick-fil-A owner down the street at South Hill. So thanks for joining us, Mike. Uh, I know I heard that uh, County Councilman Zeiger is on the, one of the lines. I don't know who the other phone numbers are. Oh, well, probably Lori. I see Lori Waltier is on the line, our Director of Communications. Uh, just confirming that Councilman Zeiger is on. All right, well, Aaron confirmed for you and I'm not sure who the other number is. If you want to unmute and say hello real quick, go for it, otherwise we'll get rolling. Okay, well, you know, we, we hadn't sort of done a round robin check-in like that. Um, so I feel like every quarter that's, that's not a bad thing. I think there's probably a lot we learned right there that wasn't on the agenda that's definitely beneficial. So thank you for doing that. Um, so quickly, I'll uh, kick us off um, with, with regards to just what's pressing for the chamber as far as advocacy. Right now, uh, House Republican leader J.T. Wilcox, um, along with Senate, Senate Republican leader uh, John Brown, has been writing uh, letters of advocacy, follow-up letters, anything to, to get the governor to respond. 
Um, but essentially just the clarification to define phase three healthy Washington roadmap to recovery plan. So uh, there's been other chambers that have been writing letters. We are writing a letter as well. Um, a lot of the points or bullets would be just really pushing for a minimum of 50% capacity um, in our restaurants. Uh, but just really, there's just yet to be a clearly defined path and, and everyone wants to see it. So we all want a little hope and we'll join that effort. If there's any insight you might have, I feel like Hannah's office, Hannah, Thomas and Brooke are, are great sort of research, researchers of data. And I would love to, to join with you to see what you're seeing out there and what you feel would be some relevant bullet points to make sure we're mentioning in these letters of advocacy. Um, Let's see, what else do we have here? We also have news from uh, House Representative Kelly Chambers yesterday forwarded me a letter from the Office of the Governor that does indicate that uh, they have the honor to advise you that on February 28th, Governor Inslee approved the following Senate bill. It was uh, Senate Bill 5272 relating to temporarily waiving certain liquor and cannabis board annual licensing fees. So that's good news. Uh, as you heard, we've had some retailers on these calls. Um, restaurants that weren't real happy to not be able to, to sell liquor um, and then still have to pay for their liquor license. So that's really good news. Um, I, do, I did attach from a week ago some updates that came from our lobbyist, Carolyn Loeb. Um, I'll just highlight a few of those that she reported on, if I can organize my notes here. Um, so essentially the legislature passed its second cutoff date on February 22nd, the day bills had to be out of the House of Origin fiscal committees in order to remain alive for session. There are still bills in fiscal committees in both houses that may come back to life as the budget is negotiated. We are leaving them off the list for now. One of the biggest bills to not make it out of committee yesterday um, was, Senate, was uh, House Bill 1084, the Building Decarbonization Bill. The House Appropriations Committee opted not to bring it out yesterday due to controversy. However, the Senate continues to advance 5126, Senator Carlisle's cap and invest bill. That bill is still in the policy committee, but has been amended based on initial stakeholder input and put on the calendar to move out of committee this week. Of utmost concern is the advancement of several bills in the labor arena. In particular, business is opposed to Senate Bill 5115, the, I don't know if it's HELSA bill or H-E-L-S-A bill, which was narrowed in scope, but would still create a rebuttable presumption in the workers' compensation system if an employee catches the disease that is the subject of a public health emergency, regardless of whether the exposure was work-related. Also concerning is Senate Bill 5064, which would expand the reasons for employees to voluntarily quit their job and still collect unemployment insurance. Finally, another bill moving through the Senate, Senate Bill 5097, would expand pay family leave coverage and in particular would expand the definition of family beyond the agreement when the original law went into place. Business opposes this bill as well. In the transportation arena, Senate Bill 1091, the low carbon fuel standard is moving and is expected to pass to the Senate. We also saw Senate Bill 5232 move out of the Senate Transportation Committee. This is the bill that would stop the use of tolling dollars from express lanes when bonding, including tolling on the express lanes for the Gateway Project. While we understand the concerns about using toll dollars for bonding during the pandemic, the Gateway Coalition firmly believes that we need to retain the ability to use these dollars for bonding on the Gateway Project or the completion could be in jeopardy over time. Um, so again, a week, a week probably late, and there's probably plenty of movement there. I'll turn to folks um, like Senator Gildon, um, Sean Egan, just to provide any other updates, correct my information and or just any other relevant to business um, movement. Sean, this is Chris. If you don't mind, I'll let you take first whack at it since I'm driving. Appreciate oh, it. I was going. I was going to defer to you or Representative Jacobson if she is still on the line. Yeah, uh, we did pass the uh, we did pass the House Bill one hundred nine one, um, which is the carbon clean fuel standard out of the House. Um, they didn't take very many of our amendments. That's why it took all day Saturday to pass it. Uh, the other one that's out there, but I don't know that it's moving much is, is the capital gains, but they made it a little less egregious, but they applied it to more categories. So 
homes, uh, for instance, there was an exemption in the beginning bill for homes, uh, real estate, if uh, less than I think four units or something. And, and now it's just, it applies to real estate that you sell beyond your, your main house. So I thought that was sad, but it, 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 it you can have a $400,000 exemption if you're, um, if you're married. So, the, and I haven't seen as much movement on that one because I looked last night and it looked like it hadn't come out of the Senate or the house. So hopefully that will die. Um, I, I think that's what I thought of that was business related that we've been doing. And we're just going there and voting, voting, voting and arguing about it all. So that's what we're doing. <laughs> I'm sure I'm missing things. I think um, so this is Sean. Sorry, go ahead, Senator. Oh, no, go ahead. No, please feel free. <laughs> All right. Um, so, yeah, Representative Jacobson is absolutely right. As we're, it, we're in the part of the session now, and it ends on uh, Monday, I believe this, this part does, where we're just in session voting on bills all day. So a lot of movement, um, and these bills are changing, you know, by the hour, basically. So I, I don't want to nail down uh, the specifics on any one particular bill because they're just uh, there's so many amendments that are moving out there and that are uh, changing all of these bills. But uh, you know, certainly we've seen the uh, uh, the voluntary quit bill definitely has some traction, uh, expanding the definition of what uh, family is for the working family tax credit. Uh, that's still moving. We have not seen the capital gains tax make. Uh, come up for a vote yet in the Senate. Uh, one of the big bills that we have coming up soon is going to be the uh, Senate Bill 5160, which is the bill that seeks to uh, resolve this uh, uh, eviction moratorium. Uh, and it has really changed from its original version, and it's still changing by the day. For the better, actually. I've got to say it's changing for the better. Um, and what else is out there? We've got this, this really focused on the DEI bills this year. That's diversity, equity, and inclusion. So we seem to be doing a lot of those, which is fine. Um, but uh, okay, I'll go, I, I'll go ahead and stop rambling there and let you go for it, Sean. The only other observation that I was going to make in this, this I think, builds off of uh, Senator Gildon's and, and Representative Jacobs. Uh, Jacobson's comments is, uh, uh, again, the, the, the two chambers are engaged in floor votes. Um, again, next Tuesday, they then go back into committees and they start considering bills from the other chamber. What's a particular note is March 17th is the next state revenue forecast. That's an important date because that is sort of the final number that lawmakers have for projecting are they in surplus? Are they in deficit? How much money do they have to play with, et cetera? And so then you begin to see real action on the budgets. Um, for us over at the Port of the Tacoma, what we are paying particular attention to is the transportation budget. While the operating budget, I think we've seen in the newspaper, has actually turned out to be, I think, far healthier than we had anticipated, if you would have asked us um, you know, a year ago, back in, in March of 2020, you know, that's been able to recover. The transportation budget remains under definite pressure right now from a variety of different factors. And so we have seen a lot of discussion um, that I think uh, Carolyn Logue had reported on before in terms of different transportation packages. Um, that those are intended to not only sort of plug holes in the existing transportation budget, but to then also be able to move forward for the next round of investments, including investments that are ordered by the Supreme Court when it comes to uh, culvert replacements in our state highways to allow for fish passage. Um, and it's one of those things, whether you like it or not, you've got a Supreme Court order, you have to comply. The reason why we're paying a lot of attention to this is we are mindful about things like the Puget Sound Gateway Project, and in particular, the State Route 167, making sure that that stays on schedule, gets funded, doesn't suddenly get sort of knocked to the side. 
And that's why we're a particular concern about Senate Bill 5232, which was the bill that Tara made reference to. This is the one that sort of undoes, undoes the toll uh, financing for the project. Um, when you're building a new highway and you're relying partially on toll revenue, you've got to catch 22. You can't build the road unless you have all of the money but you don't get all of the money unless the road is built on which you can be able to collect tolls, right? Um, so inherently you have got to use toll bonding. There is concerns about the depressed rates of uh, vehicle traffic, the uh, reduced collections in toll revenue. And so that's why the sponsors behind the bill are now wanting to have second thoughts about bonding. But A, you can't get around that catch 22 I just described and B, we also have to recognize that the tolls wouldn't go into effect on 167 for seven more years. And so if, if our traffic counts and our toll collections remain as depressed as they are seven years from now, then I think we've got a bigger problem on our hands right now in terms of you know the pandemic and whatnot. So these are just, I know some of the things we're looking at for us, it's just trying to make sure that the key transportation priorities in Pierce County like completing State Route 167, finishing the second phase of the Port of Tacoma Road interchange over at Fife, actually get finished and we finish what we've started. So that's enough of my rambling and uh, I'll shut up for now. Uh, not You're not too bad putting on the spot there. <laughs> Good job. Okay, and then I guess just one uh, last point, I would say that I did circulate um, a letter that a coalition letter that if you should choose to sign on to we would appreciate you that consideration. Um, but we have joined the US Chamber with a request to extend the application deadline for the paycheck protection program. So um, the PPP application deadline in their letter proposes December 31st. I believe there's a similar letter we've also signed on to, I think from the SBA that might've had a June date. Right now that's a March 31st date. And so I'm hoping there is enough pressure. I haven't heard on the flip side of it, what that looks like, but um, there is a very easy letter for you to sign on to that I forwarded you all this morning. So um, with that, any uh, anything else to add? If there's any bills or anything here at the very final stages, your organization or association needs additional advocacy on. Um, certainly mention that now uh, if you want to bring that to our attention. Um, so hearing none, I will also just uh, make a couple quick announcements. Uh, State of Pierce County address from the executive Bruce Danmeyer will be on March 10th. Um, that's at noon. Um, Councilman Morell may have been providing that notification too, so I apologize if I stepped on toes there. Uh, U.S. Chamber Foundation Path Forward series is this Wednesday, um, and they will have public-private partnership on vaccine administration with our Governor Jay Inslee and Microsoft President Brad Smith. So um, that will actually be on Wednesday. Uh, I guess we'll watch that. Let's see, at one o'clock, one to two. So um, that did come out in the latest chamber chatter. If anybody needs additional information on it, I'm happy to forward it to you. You can send me an email. Uh, but with that, I will kick it over to Councilman Morell, where there is quite a bit going on at the Pierce County level and would love to hear from you. Thank you, Tara. Uh, yes, uh, we are just moving forward at a pretty rapid rate. Um, 2020, uh, going back, um, it's nice to see it in the rearview mirror, uh, but uh, there's still lingering challenges. Uh, as you know, 2020 started out as a normal year, and then uh, obviously the pandemic hit, which uh, within government caused uh, quite a bit of chaos. Uh, trying to figure out how we move the people's business forward, uh, but yet understand that we're in the middle of a uh, uh, COVID-19 outbreak. Um, so, you know, we've, we've all had to learn to pivot. We've all had to learn to improvise um, and those challenges are still with us. For the county and the nation, uh, the pandemic uh, was challenging enough. But then uh, after that uh, came uh, racial unrest, 
riots as we have never seen since the 70s um, popped up in a lot of our urban areas. Uh, especially to that little uh, metropolis to the north of us, which uh, caused uh, Pierce County pause uh, because um, the protests that were happening in Pierce County were very peaceful. They were very respectful uh, of uh, personal property, and uh, we we acknowledge that. I know Executive Dan Meyer came out and uh, made uh, some statements to that effect, which then led the county council to take a look at um, what the county had been doing uh, pertaining to looking at some of the issues that were being brought forward uh, by um, the protests, uh, the Black Lives Matter uh, movement, et cetera. So the County Council um, put forward resolution 2020-43. And it was the first time the county's really done a deep dive into uh, D, uh, DEI issues, uh, but we wanted to make it a little bit more broader. Um, so just one of the whereases that we had in this resolution was as a community of considerable racial, ethic, ethnic and religious and other types of diversity, Pierce County has a complex history, which has included both significant efforts to achieve greater justice, equality and understanding, as well as unfortunate periods and events that have demonstrated the need for increased commitment, transparency, ideas, actions, and work towards these goals. And so that kind of set the tempo of moving uh, resolution um, 2020-43. And what it was was a request of the executive to take a dive into the departments that deal with uh, justice in Pierce County. And that was a very good challenge. Uh, and the exec put together a very good team that took a deep dive into criminal justice and reviewed best practice policies. And it was presented to the council. And I don't know how many uh, of your uh, folks out there have seen it, but this is kind of what it looks like and you could get copies of it. And it was done by um, all the departments, uh, you know, the sheriff's department, prosecuting attorneys, uh, medical examiner assigned counsel, uh, also uh, our economic development um, department was engaged in it. And it brought forward a lot of information and with that information, um, the council decided to move forward with resolution 202076, which put together a, um, a committee uh, of residents from Pierce County to review the information of 202043. And uh, that was kind of challenging to try and put together a uh, committee and how would it be facilitated and how would we keep it on track. Uh, but uh, we were able to get retired Judge Frank Cuthbertson to agree to facilitate it. And that turned out to be a, a great choice. Uh, each council member got to pick two citizens from their district. So there was 14 members and they started um, on a journey together 
to try and disseminate the information that the uh, executive had put together. And that was really interesting. Uh, a lot of uh, passionate uh, citizens were involved in that commission, uh, but it was able to move forward uh, quite rapidly. Um, and uh, they took each, each thing, uh, each department uh, week by week and uh, uh, came up with uh, key recommendations uh, and those recommendations came to us in a um, in a quite in-depth uh, detail. Uh, it took them uh, six months to come up with that. And what we ended up learning from that is that African Americans are arrested in Pierce County at a disproportionately higher rate, but we don't know why. And uh, also 90% of criminal defendants are poor and, an, and eligible for public defense. Uh, the other issue that came out, the mental health system is seriously broken in Washington and the bulk of the money is going towards law enforcement and correction, not mental health services we did find out that Pierce County is leading the nation in a quite, uh, or in several areas within our judicial system. And that is in our district court resource center, our DART program, and our emphasis on therapeutic courts like drug court. Um, and that has had a positive impact on the county's minority population and the poor. So with that information, we move forward uh, into 2021 with the task of putting together an action plan at the county. And one of the things we've learned is um, define your terms. Uh, words carry impactful meanings. So we're on a journey right now to really define what the terms of DE and I are. Currently, um, what we have is equity, the quality of being fair and impartial, diversity, the inclusion of people of different races and cultures and traits and characteristics that make people unique, inclusion, authentic and empowered participation and a true sense of belonging. And then we have social justice. Social justice embraces the values of equity, access, participation, and rights for all who live in Pierce County. One of the things that we definitely learned through this process is equity is defined differently in a large county. Um, in a lot of rural areas, we have what we call pocket poverty, uh, which has been a generational issue that has nothing to do with race. And uh, when you look at, you know, equity, um, that's what we're trying to do at a county is balance that out. Uh, you move beyond our urban areas and those words, um, uh, are interesting when you ask your constituents on what their uh, idea of DE&I is. So we have to be cognizant of that. Um, right now, our Law and Justice Committee is tasked with putting together the action plan. We've currently have brought in the Chamber of Commerce of Tacoma, uh, Pierce County, and also uh, um, the economic development uh, of, of Pierce County to kind of give us their reviews of what they were, what they're doing. We'll have the city of Tacoma in uh, later today to talk about what they're doing with DE&I. So right now we're gathering information. One of the issues that came up early on uh, that really is driving this is the lack of data. Uh, 
to to narrow the items down, I guess, disaggregate, they call it, um, to find out really what's driving uh, a lot of the, the demographics that we have in Pierce County. So we are putting that together. Uh, the council hired three analysts uh, for this year uh, to you know, look into that data and to try and come up with the numbers, which you know, is, is boring to some of us, but I, I think unless you really know what you're dealing with, you don't really know what you're dealing with. And so we have got to start at that level and then move forward. Um, as Judge Cuthbertson said, um, it's not how fast you do things, it's making sure you do it right the first time. And in Pierce County, that's what we're doing is we're moving it forward. We've engaged uh, every sector of our community and uh, we're looking forward to coming forward with policy that'll be impactful and uh, that it'll affect all of Pierce County, not just certain areas of Pierce County. And so with that, um, I will uh, wrap up uh, because we could talk all day about this subject and uh, not sure how far we would get. So um, anyway, uh, that's kind of what Pierce County is doing. I think we're kind of leading the way um, in how we're approaching this. And so I, I look forward to uh, seven council members engaging and uh, getting a broad spectrum of ideas uh, and finally producing some, like I say, meaningful policies that affect all of Pierce County. So with that, I will uh, uh, kind of uh, wrap up DE and I for the day. And, all right, uh, well, thank you for sharing that. Uh, Councilman Zeiger, do you have anything at, to add on that and or Anything else from the council? Well, Dave did a great job uh, describing the diversity, equity, and inclusion work uh, that, that's underway, and he's doing a great job leading that from his his role as chairman of the uh, of the public safety committee. Um, and I, I, let me just quickly uh, mention a few things. Uh, one is that the county, I think, is doing an outstanding job leading a vaccination effort here. And uh, every Thursday, for example, uh, there's a, a mass vaccination site at the Washington State Fair, and and that's been going well. Uh, I mean, the, the only real challenge has been supply into the county, and uh, but but as far as uh, an effective effort to to deploy vaccines and uh, make that as effective as possible, uh, the, the county has been doing a great job with the Department of Emergency Management, supported by um, uh, the, the Health Department and others. And uh, Governor Inslee is going to be visiting the uh, Washington State Fair parking lot this Thursday. Um, and so that'll be a good opportunity to highlight the good work that's going on there. Uh, the second thing is um, the, the county council is currently exploring a sustainability plan. This is a um, th this is a plan that has been recommended to us by uh, county staff within the planning and public works department. Um, uh, it, it is. Uh, there's still some work to do on it, and we would really appreciate input from the public. If uh, if you have an interest in the topic of uh, particularly greenhouse gas uh, uh, reduction, uh, please contact members of the county council. Uh, there will be uh, future opportunities in the coming weeks to testify on the plan. Uh, I, I think the for, for the most part the recommendations are um, are, are reasonable. I want to make sure, however, that we are able to to fund these and that we have a picture of what what, what the uh, financial reality is on this. And so, um, so I have an amendment that would put some cost estimates in with the plan, so that gives us a, a sense of uh, what we're dealing with, and also uh, a, a statement about what we're you know what is the intention of the council with this. We want to make sure that we are not mandating something that is going to um, be unrealistic over the in the coming years that we are essentially uh, putting forward a menu of options that we can choose from. And so I think having that definition is going to be really critical 
to uh, gaining the bipartisanship that we would want to have to have that kind of buy-in. And then the final thing I'll mention here is that uh, I have put forward a resolution to explore streamlining of regulations and permitting requirements for our restaurant industry. Uh, you know, and as our as our restaurants are uh, you know continuing to struggle and and being innovative and trying to find ways to do things uh, during COVID, uh, let's make sure that we are doing everything possible to to make life easy for them as as far as it's in our within our power at the county level. So um, that's a resolution that I've got forthcoming and hope that we can get council support for that. Thanks very much. Well, thank you for your work on that. Absolutely. I know we uh, posted yesterday on our chamber chatter that Pierce County has a business survey. Again, just trying to gauge uh, the best way that they can be of assistance and supportive to our businesses during this pandemic. And that survey uh, deadline is today. So if you haven't completed that and or have anyone appropriate to forward it to, please do today. Betty, did you have anything else to add? No, that's great, Sarah. We appreciate it. We've had um, over 1,600 responses, so we look forward to more, and we want to be able to get great information on how we can help uh, businesses in Pierce County. Excellent. Great. Well, we have uh, Meredith and Jeff Wilson on the phone, and I know uh, we've all mentioned that uh, there's some new businesses coming to town and things that you're busy with. So maybe give us a little bit more insight, if you will. Sure. Um, so I'm just going to do a really quick version and then pass it over to Jeff and to our council members. Um, so first of all, um, the AOB lot, which is a city owned parking lot behind the library and across from the police station is currently being marketed for redevelopment. Um, so the deadline for letters of interest to our brokers is March 17th. I know we've been getting some interest. We'd love to see some more from some of our local developer community. Um, apparently most of the interest has actually been from King County developers. So that's an interesting trend to see. And um, we'd love some local, de local developer interest. So if you have any questions or want to pass it along, uh, certainly reach out to me and I'm happy to connect you with our brokers at Lee and Associates. Um, and then on the new businesses, you know, we've seen a lot of movement in our downtown core in particular um, with new retail businesses moving in. So B Kings just moved their operations. We have Alphas, which is um, a Cajun spice company that is opening their second location. They are currently in Kent and they have quite the cult following. So it's very interesting to see. Um, there's been a lot of buzz about that on the Dime Pierce County website. Um, and we're seeing some other movement as well. I've gotten a lot of calls and a lot of outreach from people looking for spaces in our downtown core. So um, I think that is one of the silver linings of this pandemic is that we do have about 800 new businesses that started last year. And I'm, that trend seems to be continuing through this first quarter of this year, a lot of new, new entrepreneurs. Um, the last thing I will mention really quickly, we just sent out our first monthly newsletter to businesses. Uh, we started with a business license list and a few other lists, uh, but I, hopefully we'll be setting up a thing in the next week or two that you can sign up to join that list for future ones. Uh, we sent it out to about 2,000 businesses. Um, over half of them opened the newsletter. A lot of them clicked on different parts of it. So that was great to see and another way to connect and share information with the community. You know, the Chambers newsletter is such a great one. And so we're hoping to um, provide just another outlet for information. So I'll pass it over to Jeff. Uh, thank you, Meredith. Um, in addition to things that Meredith has mentioned, I mean, we still see, I think, a pretty hefty or fairly consistent growth pattern occurring, at least in terms of new development. Been a lot of redevelopment of existing buildings, uh, especially up close to the hospital, bringing in new clinics or expanding on clinics that are already there to, to support the hospital. A number of new larger projects, you know, Councilor Winning mentioned the uh, East Town Crossing project that is uh, it's finally made it through a lot of the hurdles in terms of the land use side of things and uh, changing zoning and the comp plan and it's starting to work through the permitting side of things and hopefully bring that one through to fruition sometime soon. Uh, everybody's working really heavily from both the applicant and the staff side are working collaboratively on a very aggressive schedule to see what we can do to help out. Uh, there are a number of other large projects, both in and outside the city that have impacts on the city that we're working with our neighbors to kind of collaborate to make sure that we address the uh, all the things that go along with growth equitably in terms of the jurisdiction so that we're making sure that we're not impacting each other too much. Um, 
we're providing a report uh, study session with our council coming up in a very near future, very near future about regarding our affordable housing action plan. Uh, we've been going through the, the public process with that and seeking public input. And now we're, we're going to provide an update to the council, uh, give them some ideas and hope to get a little bit of direction to help refine the actions that we may take. So we move forward with how we would amend both our comp plan and our zoning regulations to help implement the affordable housing action plan. And we're also evaluating, I think, especially in our downtown core, we have requirements for frontage improvements when uh, new buildings are built or when buildings are remodeled. We're taking a look at that model to see what we can do to improve that, to change the threshold so it doesn't necessarily have as, as significant an impact on the redevelopment of those properties so we can find a more balanced way to help uh, encourage that redevelopment activity to take place. And, and updating the updating a plan that, or a program that in place been in place for a long time and not seen a lot of changes. So we're going through and we're revamping that. We're working with the we have this uh, group put together called the Cal Permitting Partnership, which is a number of local uh, developing developers in the community, and working with them, and bouncing ideas back and forth, so we can come up with a plan that will work and meet both of our needs. So those are some of the things that we have going on, and uh, that's just kind of the tip of the iceberg. But there are many things that are going on right now. So. Thank you for that. Turn, I don't know if it's Council Member Jacobson or Council Member Whitting, if they have anything else that they'd like to say. Thank you. I was just going to say there's a little tempest in a teapot about whether or not we're going to do a racial equity commission in Puyallup, and we're working on it. And we might have been quoted in the news saying we weren't going to consider it, but you know, uh, we're, we're considering all our options on that. Thank you. Yeah, good reports, Meredith and Jeff. Uh, I don't have anything to add. Okay, well, thank you very much for that. Appreciate it. Uh, let's uh, roll it over to, let's see, is Mayor Pugh still on the line or Deputy Mayor Hayden have some updates from Sumner? Well, what the heck. <clears throat> um, and, and again, Ryan, I apologize. He had a, a family situation and he couldn't be on the, um, the call today. Uh, uh, the council has been uh, dealing with uh, a whole lot of work from staff on the comp plan updates. There's a lot of changes uh, around town, especially in the East Sumner area. And so uh, they had uh, a hearing on that and we'll be you know, taking that up within the next month. Um, White River restoration. I, I, it sounds like a far away project up there, but it's around $130 million project that not only uh, provides for habitat for you know endangered species, orca, um, but it also uh, provides protection for our $1 billion worth of assessed valuation that comprises the MIC. Um, and that is a big deal. We can't afford to have that flood. Um, and we're moving forward uh, out of 130 million, we probably have around half of the dollars raised we're looking for a critical grant out of the legislature this year uh, to move forward with a major restoration project uh, in the golf course area south and which will be a big start to protecting that whole area and making sure we're able to keep the 16,000 jobs uh, that it provides. Continue working on transportation issues. We're really happy that the traffic avenue interchange is done. And I know that the city of Puyallup is also happy that we got it done for you. Um, because I, I know it works uh, a lot better, but we're, we're continuing to work on other interchanges and God knows what's going to come out of the transportation budget to help us in that effect. I think that's going to be a challenge. Um, but the latest thing we have is the Sumner Taps uh, road leading up the hill and uh, our, our online platform for receiving comments. We received over 2000 comments and responses on that. So. Uh, uh, our outreach efforts uh, virtually are, are working. Um, the library, out of all the library issues that Pierce County had going, the one that's moving forward is the Sumner Library. And uh, the site where it's going to be located is right across from uh, Top Down Brewing. Um, so you'll be able to read and drink um, at relatively the same location. And uh, uh, I, we have some exciting prospects for donors into that, and I think it's going to move forward and be a great, great project. Um, 
I mentioned about uh, housing and housing action plans. We partnered with Bonnie Lake, I think Brian had mentioned that, to do a housing action plan. The draft issue is out. Now we're going through to come up with the final plan and looking at, at implementing that, as well as being part of the larger effort. Uh, and Puyallup is one of those cities also that is doing that. And that's the South Island Housing Affordability Partnership or SHAPE and to see what we can do on a, on a regional basis. And then um, uh, two other real quick things, because we're 857. Um, uh, we've been working on most of our systems, our virtual systems, whether it's HR, whether it's finance, whether it's permitting and our public input, they're all virtual platforms, but we've been having to work on them virtually um, over the last year. We haven't been able to meet in person, but they are all moving forward and uh, making some great prog progress. So I think it's great credit to staff. And then finally, uh, one of those um, frustrating things, an article in the News Tribune about summers moving ahead with rhubarb days and, and the wine walk and all that. And I'm going, well, yes, maybe, perhaps. Um, uh, that was a headliner and we're all caught by headliners sometimes as opposed to what's in the article. Uh, but if you read the article, uh, just like everybody else, we're trying to chase the guidelines as they change. You know, and as they change, we may or may not be able to do things or it may not, you know, be possible or it may be possible. Who the heck knows? Um, and it's really tough for people like the Sumner Main Street Association to try to plan those things when we don't know exactly what we're, we're facing. with. So working with them to try to do the best we can to, you know, to get those events happening. But uh, who knows? Stay tuned. And da, 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 da. I think that's it. That's enough for me. Kathy, anything? No, I think you covered it all pretty good, Mayor. Thank you. Did good. I'll mention there is a shop snack and stroll, not quite the sip yes. and stroll, but yep. uh, on March 13th, I believe. So frequent yep. the small businesses and there'll be snacks with safe guards in place um, on March 13th. Yep, correct. Yep. All right. Any, oh, let's see, Mayor Pugh, can I believe any? Oh, yep. I, I saw your comment, Sandy. That's um, apparently Puyallup and Sumner both got hit with false headlines. <laughs> all right. Anything else <laughs> before we conclude? This has been a fantastic meeting and so nice to touch base with all of you. All right. Until next week. So great to see you. Have a great rest of your week.